All right, in this video, we're going to prove the distributed law for the OR. Right here, we're going to have a P or Q. And so we're going to distribute the P to the Q, and then we're going to distribute the P to the R. And that gives us two other compound statements. As you can see over here, we have one and two more compound statements. So one and two more compound statements. And the last thing that happens, we take the P or the Q, put it together, and we put the end, which I'm going to put in orange, we put the end right here in the middle. And so I hope you can see what's happening. And I'll put the highlight this in red so you can see what's happening. We got P or and the R, and that becomes P or R. And so let's get started. And so the first thing we need to do is to write down our statement variables such components as written right here. And then you identify their truth values. And I'll explain that right now. And then we're gonna put out the whole entire statement. And what are these following statements? The following statements are, and so I'll put them in in a different color, I'll put them in gray color. So it's going to be one statement, and so that's this statement, right? Q and R. So we're going to put that statement in there, and then we're going to have the statement P and Q, or P or Q, my bad. So this is going to be the second statement right here, as you can see as following. And then finally, the third statement is going to be P or R, right? That's following right here. So we have two and three. And so the final part is going to be our sentence. Our sentence is as following up here. So this is our sentence, just written down here, without the logical equivalent sign. And just depending on your professor, they might want it right here, they might not. So I'm not here to, to tell you what to do. I'm just here to give you all the different variations and options that um come up in mathematics and so at least in this class and so the first thing we need to do we need to establish our truth values for our statement variables and so in order for us to do that we need to know the the what do you call it the the two n so the two n is basically um an idea of the n stands for the statement variables so it's a s like a sequence where every every extra variable this gets longer so if this was one this should be right here right so I write it in green if we had one statement variable that would be like that if we have two it becomes four as you can see right here I'll put that as two and if you have three, it becomes um, twice as long. So that becomes three. And so you can see that that gives us eight rows. And so what are we going to do with the following eight rows? And why did they define as true and false as following? It's because of another rule that's just the same, but it's going to be one half on top. And you don't have to write it out like this. These are just um, rules that that satisfy there's a lot of different ways to solve one problem right and so that's basically what I'm trying to say and so this is the most efficient and easiest way for the majority of people and so right here we're going to have one half of this going to be true as following now I'm sorry if you guys already know what you're doing you could just um, fast forward and right here we have one half of that's true one half is false one fourth of true, one fourth of false, one fourth of true, one fourth of false, and it should be one eighth. If you can see that, one eighth is going to be true. So it's be one eighth, which is going to be one true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, and that adds up to eight. That's going to add up to one whole um, truth value. And so we could put these in different kind of. Um, you can put different statements or slash um, what do you call it formulas that's a better word my bad formulas for describing this I'm just giving you a general idea of the formula that I feel like defines this pretty well without putting too much thought into it and so finally let's jump into it and so right here we're gonna jump into our problem we have Q and R and if you know what Q and R means. We have to have two true in order for the statement to be true. And that's true. 
and you can see that the following three are false because you can see that they're not true they both need to be true and these are both false so we're going to have three falses in a row and then following with the true because that's q and r right so that's going to be true and if you don't see that it's because the green I'll put it again it's going to be r Uh, just erase that. Let's see. So that's our. And so, if you can see um, the rest of it, the rest of it is going to be false, right? That's true, false, false, true, false, false. Oh, another color. And then we have P or Q. And so, what do we need to know for P or Q? If one is true, then the whole entire statement is true. So that this is true, this is true, the next one's true, the next one's true. As you can see here, the first four are true. And so it's good to know the pattern. The first four are true. And so now we don't have to worry about this because we know all that's false. So we already looked at that whole entire column, right? That's one column going straight down. And then we have true, true, false, false. And so the next two are true. And so the bottom two rows this way are going to be false. False. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right, that adds up to 8. So we have P or R. Alright, so what do we need to know? We need to know that P, if P is true and R is true, then this is true. If 1 is true, 1 is false, and so forth. Like I said already. And so we're just going to follow the same kind of pattern true false true 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 false is six p r true false all right so that's gonna be our pattern that should be our everything that's one two three four five six seven eight and so that's how you could tell if you did right you have eight of them and if you could definitely tell if you did it right because these should be logically equivalent unless otherwise not stated because some problems are going to say are these logically equivalent and some of them say prove that this is logically equivalent in this case we're proving this is logically equivalent so if this wasn't logically equivalent therefore there's a mistake in your truth table and so that's what we're going to do right now we're going to finish off the statements with their sentences and combine the statements to make a sentence so P or so what are we looking at? We're literally looking at P and Q and OR. And so that gives us true. Right, because it'd be it's either or. And so we can just look at these this column right here. We can see four true. So these four are gonna be true. F f nice and easy and fast. We didn't have to do much thinking. So now we gotta look at the next four rows, right this way, of the two following columns. So these four are false, so we don't care about this anymore. We're going to look at the column that we need to look at, which is this one. And you can see that this one is true, so the fifth one is true, and then the rest of the following are false. And so the next sentence should be logically equivalent to this sentence or we did something wrong. And sometimes you make mistakes, so don't worry if you made a mistake. Just look back at your truth table, start from the beginning, and then go forward to see if check if that's right, check if that's right, check if that's right, and then check if you didn't write your your ends or ors wrong, or you copied the proof wrong. And so those are just some good tips to to make good habits. So we have P or Q. So what are we looking at? I'll write this in red. We are looking at P or Q, and P or R. So two or statements that combine to make an end statement. So we could look at this first. Um, what do you call it? Um, column right here. We can see that this is first six rows are true of the column, and then you can see these two are false. So we we already established that these two rows are false, and so what do we need to know now? So it doesn't matter about that. We just need to look up here. We can see that's true. This is false, and so we have established that the rest are going to be true just by looking at the column because we're looking at the end statement, right? The end and the end. 
so these are true and I'll put that in another color so you can see what I'm talking about these are true one two three four five these are all true and if one is false or the other one is false it doesn't matter about these so that's true 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 and so we check if they're logically equivalent right that's true to that's true you don't have to draw these lines right I'm just showing you what you have to do though if you see they're logically equivalent you put these signs right here and if it's not logically equivalent then you go like this in this case it's all logically equivalent as you can see three falses three falses five trues and five trues so the last thing we need to do is put put um the therefore sign which is going to be these three thoughts I have said in the past there thus that's the informal way to say it but in math there's a we say a lot of things wrong and so feel free to say this as what is um, logically right for it right and so what I'm going to explain to you is that that what do you call it um, this all this means is in conclusion and so we say in conclusion therefore thus and therefore is the formal way of saying this so, so we're going to say therefore we proved the, this following um, statement right up here but I'm pro draw this in green and we gotta write this up there I'm not gonna write it out I don't want to take your time and right here then you put the logically equivalent sign and you put it over there and therefore you finish your um, proof so you say thus or therefore if this is it's logically equivalent to that so you say therefore this is logically equivalent to that thus we we finish our proof or any anything of that matter is um, a well-defined um, conclusion statement even just putting this might be a well-defined conclusion statement depending on your instructor so I hope this video was helpful if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to the channel and if you want to see more content like this I make uh, videos on the daily and if if otherwise I will mention it on my YouTube page. So thank you everybody and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.